A lot of people work hard behind the scenes to keep Parker Schnabel's Yukon mining business running when he's not finding gold on Discovery's hit show Gold Rush. But fans want to know how much Parker's crew members get paid while they risk their lives and limbs churning pay dirt 24 hours a day, 7 days a week in the harsh Klondike. The crew works 75 hours a week. How much do they get paid? Which workers make almost $500,000 a year running Parker's risky business? Come along on this fun trip as we look closely at how much Schnabel's group makes. Parker Schnabel tells all about how much his crew gets paid. Gold Rush is a hit show on the Discovery Channel that keeps the attention on young mining mogul Parker Schnabel every week. Millions of people follow his brave journey to get gold from the harsh Klondike Desert. Fans watch Parker lead the way in each important mining milestone, but they don't notice the daily risks and sacrifices of his entire staff. Let's take a moment to honor Parker's hardworking crew, who make it all possible but don't get enough credit. Parker was very open on social media when he talked about what his hardworking team gets to take home after months of digging. His openness was a welcome gift for all the people who want to know how much these regular workers on his salary make. Even though crew members helped keep Schnabel's Big Nugget Mine running nonstop, important information about their pay has stayed hidden like so much Klondike gold up until now. Parker says that the new workers on his Yukon mine crew put in 75 hours a week for weeks during the short summer mining season. In general, they make about 34 Canadian dollars an hour. Paying by the hour might sound like a pretty cool job, but Parker's claim, which is based on being physically and mentally drained to the limit, says it's about CAD 65,000 over 25 weeks, or about six months, because of the hard Yukon winter that stops digging. Taxes and living costs at camp are taken into account, and new crew members' take-home pay gets closer and closer to CAD 40,000. It was a very hard job. Parker also said that teams work 12-hour shifts that are very strictly scheduled and start working together at 7 o'clock a.m. until 7 o'clock at night, when the summer sun in Alaska lets it. As the short season grows older and the days get shorter, shift changes begin at 8 o'clock a.m. to 7 o'clock p.m. Parker gives his best workers some nice bonuses, even though the starting pay may not seem like much for the amount of work that is expected. The mine's huge fleet of rock trucks are some of Schnabel's most valuable assets, and the machine workers who are in charge of them can make more than CAD 440000 a year. These skilled miners drive huge Caterpillar trucks that can carry up to 50 tons of ore from the fields to the wash plant. Their never-ending runs are key to beating Parker's high 4,000-ounce, $6 million season gold goal. Even though it's hard on their bodies and takes a lot of time, workers who are put in charge of these important tasks could make six figures. Thanks to Parker's openness, fans now know more about how much Parker's crew makes. However, it's important to remember that the numbers he shared are medians and averages, not exact amounts. Pay for entry-level jobs changes depending on experience, bonuses are kept secret, and the amounts given could be in Canadian dollars instead of US dollars. To those who want to be daring and join Parker Schnabel's Yukon Mine Crew, this is the real deal. You could work long hours and get some rough treatment from Mother Nature in exchange for a good living. Even though it's not your normal 9-to-5 job, Parker and his crew are making dreams come true one ounce at a time in the Klondike, where the gold is. Weeks that are hard for new workers. Parker Schnabel's huge success is due in large part to the hustle and hard work of his crew. Along with the gold at the end of the season, one thing that is certain about life at Big Nugget Mine is long, hard hours. Good pay is waiting for entry-level newbies who are ready to work long hours for little pay. But life won't always be easy. As we've already talked about, Schnabel's new crew members work 75-hour weeks their first season. In just five days, that's more than twice as many hours as a normal 40-hour office job. And when mine is busy and there is a lot of daylight, those long shifts last from 7 a.m. until just before midnight. As fall gets closer to the Yukon, the days get shorter until very early in the morning, but crews still work non-stop from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. every day. Turning 12-hour cranks, it's an endless loop of unbearably long days that are meant to get as much gold as possible out of the ground before winter comes and kills everyone. There are millions of dollars at stake every season, and sitting idle cuts into profits too much. And when your boss is a taskmaster like Parker Schnabel, you can't skip steps or take too long to do something. Because of the short mine window, this hard pattern lasts for 25 weeks, or until the harsh Yukon winter makes it too cold to go on. As of the end of the week, workers are getting paid an average of CAD 34 an hour for their hard work. When you break it down, this comes to about $63,000 over the 25-week mining time, 
or $2,150 for every 75 hours worked. Then bonuses are given based on success measures, which Parker doesn't want anyone else to know about. It's still a mystery, but since the amount of gold found in the Klondike increases every day in the summer, bonus rewards are likely to be big for the hardworking workers. Even though the Olympians probably feel like they deserve the money they make, it's important to remember that camp costs and taxes also take a big bite out of earnings. After all the costs are taken out, our beginner worker gets closer to CAD 40000 for their first mining operation under Parker Schnabel. It may not be nearly as much as their famous boss makes in a year, but it's a good haul for newcomers to Yukon gold hunting, who want to show what they're made of. Discovery makes the deal even better for workers who make cameos on Gold Rush, who are looking for even bigger paychecks. Parker said that miners who show up on episodes sometimes could make up to CAD 25000 per TV spot. With 6 million watchers every week, Schnabel's very popular show, getting some screen time could pay off big time. Even a few appearances can give people who are working long hours a big boost. Reports say Parker gave out CAD 140000 in bonuses just for one season last year. Expertised operators make six-figure amounts of money. Parker Schnabel hires a team of expert operators to take care of important tools in addition to the entry-level workers who work hard 75-hour weeks. These workers get paid some of the most on site because they have to expertly maneuver technically complicated heavy machinery that works around the clock. The trained workers who run Big Nuggets mechanical workhorses make a lot of money every year. The master drivers who run Parker's rock truck regiment get paid more than anyone else. Every day these experienced professionals are in charge of unique Caterpillar 740B EJ 50-ton beasts that are worth more than $750,000 each. They carefully and precisely move tons of loose gold from different claims to the wash plant, where it is sluiced and sorted. People who drive rock trucks are very important to Parker's search for gold at Big Nugget Mine. They are like the heartbeat of the business because they make sure that the wash plant, which is an important part of getting gold, always has rocks to use. The big goal of getting 4,000 ounces of gold, which is worth $6 million per season, would be very hard to reach without their constant hard work. For Parker, Failure is still not an option because every mining year his fame and family history are at risk. Even though he wouldn't say the exact amount, he did say that rock truck drivers make an amazing CAD, 440000 during shooting. They make more than 3.5 times as much as entry-level crew hands with that huge pay. The fact that hundreds of loads are moved every day and jobs that never end in the middle of chaos shows that they work harder for it too. Few people are skilled enough to go down narrow trails next to cliffs at high speeds, move 50 tons of loose rock at a time, and master complicated gear transfer systems. The fact that they can keep going for hours on end through the harsh Klondike environment shows how tough and experienced the experts are behind the wheel. Parker's fleet is a place where luck favors the brave. With so much riding on his biggest hot rod rigs, Parker spends all the money he can on the best rock trucks in the Yukon. And their six-figure paychecks made teams that worked all season in the dirt for fractions wish they had driving monster machines. If you have the guts to operate Parker's most dangerous mining equipment, the benefits are legendary, on par with the rising star himself. Room and board, living in a mining camp saves money. In addition to their big paychecks, Parker Schnabel's crew gets basic food and has their living costs covered as well. By housing workers in mine camps close to his claims, he can keep operating costs low because the teams don't have to pay much for their own housing. This setup is especially helpful for newcomers who are facing their first hard Klondike winter. For them, simple housing is more important than the risks of finding short-term rentals far away in rural places like Dawson City, which is an hour south. The rough bunks at the hostel may not have all the pleasures of home, but working long days and nights together builds community. Fresh-faced young miners don't worry about outside living problems their first year. Instead, they focus on working hard and playing hard when they have free time. Parker understands better than anyone because he used to work as a miner when he was a teenager and grew up in similar remote settings. Parker makes it easier to get top talent to move to the north by giving full packages that include crew pay and food and lodging on site. This talent is ready to spend months sleeping in simple trucks that are crammed together all the time. When you're an equipment operator making over $500,000 a year driving big machines, the simple comforts of home seem like a small price to pay. Parker's arrangements don't end with making sure people have beds and a place to stay. At all times, the team cook serves hearty, healthy food to everyone. During peak season, teams work 12-hour days in harsh, freezing weather, 
and burn a huge number of calories every shift. So making sure his team eats hot, well-balanced meals every six hours is a great way to keep their spirits up and keep them performing at their best in the field. And being able to focus is important when you're using tools worth hundreds of thousands of dollars while not getting much sleep and still having to be very accurate. Crews don't have to waste time going into town to get groceries on their days off. Instead, they can relax with good food and drinks around common tables and fires. At camp, their main goal is to get ready for the next big shift of chasing Parker's targets. By making sure people have the basic comforts they need to rest, future output is protected. That being said, Parker's on-site services may make living costs go away, but taxes still have to be paid, just like they do at any other job. After Uncle Sam takes his cut, the benefits of miners' work are a little less plentiful, especially for those making six figures running Parker's fleet. But taxes aside, crews can save money and focus when they don't have to worry about food, lodging, or taxes. Parker also makes a lot of money because it keeps skilled workers who like working in settings that let them do hard, physical work. It works out for everyone. The less time workers have to worry about things other than finding gold, the better they can focus on their work. A recipe that keeps Parker's record-breaking wealth going year after year. Off-season recovery and rewards. As profitable as it is to mine for gold in the famous Klondike, Parker Schnabel's business is run by a strict clock. No matter what happens, the mining season comes to an end, when the harsh Yukon winter sets in at the end of October. And that means Parker's tired workers have to take a five-month break during the off-season, which they really need after six months of hard work. This extra time to heal lets both people and machines get better before the fires start up again in the spring. When team members are given time off, they need it to recover from working 75 hours a week during peak season. And what better place to rest for the holidays than at home with family and the things you're used to? Parker's veterans enjoy some time off, but the allure of going back north calls them back sooner rather than later. Year after year, beating out 90% of competitors to get into Parker's proven program is a must. You can't lose a step as a miner or you'll be passed. Even tails need to be fine-tuned. Parker, who is from Minnesota, uses the time off to fully recharge before going after improved 4,000-ounce gold, which is hard to find anywhere else besides the Klondike. When he gets home, he immediately starts making changes to his plans for the upcoming season based on what didn't work in the past. Data analysis and spatial maps are used to find the best goals across many claims, which leads to changes in mine plans. After that, more practical changes are made by upgrading equipment or making changes to procedures, which results in smaller gold profits. Every off-season is a great time to make Parker's plan even better. While Schnabel Jr. plans his next move from offices, Dietz has to do his own magic on faraway Alaskan hills. As Parker's trusted lead manager, only his hawk-like eyes can confirm that claims will produce the huge amounts that are expected further downstream. To do this job correctly, you have to carefully look over millions of acres of undeveloped land covered in snow to find gold-rich mines along hill lines using binoculars. After samples are taken, they must be carefully analyzed to make sure they contain the right amount of material before Parker's mine areas are finalized. And where people's eyes can't reach, drones and laser-guided satellite data fill in the blanks. With both cutting-edge technology and old-fashioned Yukon know-how, Parker's crew is ready to take advantage of any good signs that come their way. Crew members who are tired can rest during the off-season, but Parker and his team don't stay at ease for long, not with peers who are hungry and outsiders who are freely moving north. In the Klondike wilds, hungry rivals are making progress toward the young, driven moguls crown every minute he isn't busy getting ready. Lucky people often do well, and Parker himself knows this to be true. Yukon Glory's small window of opportunity quickly closes, and yesterday's high scores don't mean anything when the new season starts in March. It's there that the hunt starts all over again, with Parker Schnabel in charge and millions of dollars on the line. Changes in income. When Parker Schnabel first talked about how much his Yukon crew would be paid, the numbers seemed almost too good to be true compared to normal jobs. Because there are so many factors that can change in the mining business, his stated pay should not be taken at face value. In the Klondike Desert, Crew pay changes from season to season, just like in any job that depends on changes in the commodity market and output measures. Bonus payments are completely based on how much gold is taken out and sold to refiners further down the line. The money benefits at the end of the year are bigger for everyone if Parker's team recovers more ounces. But because government rules set such a small working window, output depends a lot on how well the equipment works and how lucky Mother Nature is. No matter how determined the workers are, Breakdowns cause ounces to be lost right away. 
Also, if stubborn ice or thaws make it hard to get to claims with lots of money, beating previous seasons is put off faster than a freeze-up. Increasing fuel costs also hurt, cutting into the profit margins needed to buy better equipment and new parts that are necessary to win more. Fixed business costs, such as machine leases and permit fees, need to be planned for in advance, which means there is less cash available for bonuses. Also, the issue of money itself makes things more complicated. When Parker gave pay figures on TV in North America, it was easy to forget to differentiate between Canadian dollars and American dollars. But in the North, across the ice, the difference is very important. With the exchange rate we have now, that $440,000 number for rock truck drivers is more like USD 340000 And for new miners who start out with $65,000, the value of their earnings drops below $50,000 when exchange markets are taken into account. Still good money for six months, especially since it includes food and other necessities. But the change is something that should be thought about. One last important thing to think about is taxes, which should be taken out of wages before workers even get their money. After federal and payroll taxes are taken out, those big pay packages don't seem as impressive, though they're still acceptable. To sum up, the things that affect changes in income are mostly natural disasters, technical problems, costs, exchange rates, and taxes. In the few years when output is slowed down, Parker's ability to pay workers well shows that he cares. When gold flows, money moves with it. In fact, Parker should be praised for being ready to share any numbers at all, since most mining companies would never go public. The figures he gave are only pieces of the whole picture. Only those brave enough to fight with Parker in the Klondike lines during the summer will know the whole story. For newcomers who are still not scared off by the endless muck for a chance at Yukon pay dirt riches, asking to be a Parker Schnabel crew member means at least a good chance of making money. Just know that gold rush seasons are never the same, especially since the Prince of Mining is planning his biggest hits for later, taking part in Parker's Yukon Wildcatters. Parker Schnabel's recent reveal of the pay of his mining teams sparked a lot of interest, since the reality TV star usually keeps these kinds of things secret. Schnabel's willingness to be open can teach people who are daring and not afraid of the huge problems that come with gold digging. The numbers made public put light on what prospectors will find in the Klondike wilderness, which is both profitable and unapologetically hard work. They show how to get to possible profitable results, assuming that Parker's tracks bring in a lot of new members. People used to rush north because they thought they could get rich quickly. This happened when rumors of Yukon gold first started to spread more than a hundred years ago. Like that time, the current trip doesn't promise anything other than hard work and sacrifice with the possibility of wealth as the final prize. Those who are weak should not apply. For the few strong people who don't mind spending long days in meltwater ditches in the harsh Arctic sun, there is still a chance to hit it big or at least make a good living with Parker's team. Because Schnabel is so open, his work shows us what might be coming next. The most important question is whether the people who want to work there can handle the long hours, sore feet, and boring jobs that are needed to not only find gold specks, but also fill pockets with coins. This choice is very important, especially when you think about how hard it is on your body every day. Some people might not think it's worth it to go through these sure struggles in order to get the possible future payouts. On the other hand, some people may be motivated by the task itself, facing the harsh Yukon environment to pay for their dreams. The chance to work with Parker Schnabel, who is known as TV's most famous current prospector, makes the job even more appealing. Many newbies looking for teachers would love the chance to work with yesterday's rookie superstar, who is now a master at building fortunes. Other than the editing, cameras, and celebrity spotlight, joining Parker's group is a lot like the journey of wildcatters, like my grandpa John Schnabel, who took on the challenges of earlier Klondike strikes. It's like history all over again. Endless days, primitive conditions, and fortunes that are hard to predict. But this time, the stakes are higher than ever. Parker lays out the cards for the very few people who are drawn to this dangerous but freeing journey. The basic buy-in and the ups and downs of the future are made clear, so candidates can decide if they want to put up money in an informed way. As the saying goes, if you don't risk it, you don't gain. Fortune is on the side of the brave, but it wants its pound of meat. The secret of the Klondike still exists, waiting for next season's thrill-seekers who can answer it. As new prospectors get ready to explore this famous land, there is a big question in the air. Will their hard work and a lucky break lead to new stories in the history of Dawson City? Or will their dreams be cut short by the hard facts of fiction's last frontier? Thank you to Parker Schnabel for being open about pay. The call for candidates is stronger than ever. Now, before we end our tour, let's pay special attention to Parker Schnabel, the gold guru, who is the real master of the art.
This is Parker Schnabel, the gold guru. A lot of money has been made by Parker Schnabel on the hit television show Gold Rush. Parker was born on July 22, 1994, in Haines, Alaska, a town that is rich in gold. He started his journey into the glamorous world of gold digging before he was old enough to drive. Parker was the face of new blood in the gold mining game right from the start. No time for the high school prom? He had to move big machines and lead a group of people deep into the Alaskan desert. And he did all of this while most kids his age were getting ready to apply to college. Because Parker grew up in a family of miners, he got more than just a family name. He also got a gold pan and a strong desire to get rich. His grandfather John was a famous miner in his own right. He left Parker not only a love for gold, but also a tradition that he was happy to carry on. Yes, Alaska's wilds aren't easy. And the gold market? It's all over the place, like Alaska's weather. Did that stop Parker, though? This is not true at all. He knew what he had to do to get through it, and we saw him use every failure to make something even more amazing happen. Parker doesn't just work as a miner, he also runs his own business. For Parker, taking over the family's big nugget mine wasn't just a way to pass on the business, it was a chance to make it his own. He also does some smart things. Parker showed us that he's more than meets the eye by doing things like improving production and beating the gold market's ups and downs. Parker is now well known in the gold mine business, where every nugget is made the hard way, and each season brings its own set of problems. He is more than just a young man looking for gold. He is tough, determined, and has a bit of the Alaskan pioneer spirit. It's not all business with Parker, though. He also knows how to have fun. His trip is full of fun, friendship, and that special Alaskan charm that you can't help but love. It's important to remember that behind the dirty overalls and big tools is a young man who is living out his dream and smiling the whole time. We can't help but wonder what's next for Parker Schnabel, the gold guru, as Gold Rush keeps going. Will he get lucky again? Is he going to learn something new? That's the beauty of it all. In the world of gold digging, the only thing that is certain is that things will go wrong. So here's to Parker Schnabel, the famous gold rush miner who defies the chances in the wilds of Alaska to chase golden dreams as big as the area he takes over each season. Happy birthday to strong young people with hearts as big as the Klondike. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our station. Don't leave the page yet. Click the movie on the screen to see more cool films.